All right, here we go. Round five of Pro Tour of Theros. I'm Rashad Miller here with Brian David Marshall. And we're about to watch Frank Carson play against Patrick Chapin, Channel Fireball, Star City Games. Here, here we've gone, actually. We're already on turn three. Frank Carson has played a Burning Tree Emissary with nothing to do with the mana. Uh, Patrick has played a Precinct Captain. And Frank has played a Domri Raid which he promptly ticks up, although he could have fought the precinct captain there. Yeah, that, that could have been a fight there, and that would have effectively gotten around the first strike of the precinct captain. But it looks like uh, Frank Carson values his um, red mana symbols more than, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the, than the two damage and subsequent one ones that um, the precinct captain will create. As a precinct captain does actually attack, not sure if it attacked Damri or Frank Karsten. Uh, I believe it looks like it is Frank Karsten. I don't know if you get a 1-1 one, one token I, I if don't, you I don't attack a planeswalker. So there's uh, Frank Carson's hand. Oh, Only two cards left. And that's why he did not attack the Planeswalker. He doom uh, Heroes downfalls Whoa, the Planeswalker. Murder plus? Yeah. <laughs> Heroes downfall can kill... Target yeah. creature. It's like a split card. It's like a split card. Murder and mayhem. <laughs> that's, hey, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's a Burning Tree Emissary. He's going to get in for two. That's going to bring Patrick Chapin right. down to 18. And a stopping ground two. tapped, I believe, is Frank Carson's play. He doesn't have a lot of cards. He has a Xenoghost in his hand along with a Porphyros, um God of the Forge. And uh, so <clears throat> he had the opportunity to play one of those cards if he really wanted to, but uh, passed the turn two. to Chapin. Patrick Chapin, who attacks again, gets another 1-1 one, one soldier token and follows that up with the Desecration Demon. I one see. person has a very good board. Yeah. <laughs> and one does not. There, there we get a look at uh, what's left in Patrick Chapin. He still has a hero's downfall. You have how many cards in him? Uh, and he's De be definitely waiting for something a little bit better than, yeah. than a Burning Tree Emissary it to can, kill. It can, it can stop us in Agos. Uh, can't really deal with uh, Porphyros. So Frank Carson staring at the mountain that he just draw that he just drew. Um, and he's looking at his Xenagos and a Porphyros, God of the Forge. Yeah, take a look at uh, Desecration Demon over here. You know, that, that's a card that uh, people really wanted to be a great finisher, and um, it needed to wait until maybe post rotation or sure i mean this is this good. is what generally happens right you know you see you see the other block leave and then you, you see the cards that have been around for a little while but waiting to find a home suddenly you know it's kind of next man up next man up mentality yeah. they talk it, about that in sports you know yeah, someone yeah. goes on the injury reserve next man up well you know we, we've lost a bunch of cards who, who who's uh, stepping up to the plate so so all of the six men if you were, you know, come off the bench yeah. uh, for all of the decks. Yep. It's like, hey, it's my turn. I'm a 6-6 six, six flyer for four. I can do some things. Looks like Frank Carson has decided on a play. He plays the mountain, taps six, I mean, taps four, and that is Xenoghost. The is Reveler. Is he going to make a wolf? Or? Looks like it is the plus one, so that's going to be a green and red. It might be a wolf. It is a green and red token of some sort. We'll find out. We'll actually get uh, Xenoghost up so you guys yeah. can see it. One of the new Planeswalkers from uh, Theros. You always want to see a Planeswalker get some play because these guys are, are super cool. And oh, I'm sorry. It's a red and green Seder token. Oh, it's a Seder. So you can put that in your Seder decks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Along with all your Muta Vaults. If you're wondering what deck to play at Passover, you might want to play... <laughs> With, uh, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Have him over for some satyrs. Yeah. <laughs> right, so looks like uh, Frank Carson is considering, he's posturing as if he has something to do, okay. but uh, he's just going to say, go ahead, Patrick Chapin, do whatever you like. He's going to let him attack with the desecration demon. We sound, it sounds like on the back table, uh, Luis Scott Vargas has taken an early one-game lead over Lucas Seau. Just fanatic of Mogus, fanatic of Mogus to uh, just eat his life total in, you know, larger than 25% chunks. Yeah, he's like a flame tongue for your opponent's face. Or for their planeswalker. Yeah, he's face tongue. Yeah. All right, yeah. so an attack comes down, and it looks like a lot of those went uh, Xenagos' way as Xenagos hits the bin. 
Frank Carson still at 13. He's tapping five mana now on his turn. And that is a Storm Breath Dragon who's going to sit back and play defense because there's a lot of um, offense coming away from Patrick Chapin. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, yep. Sure. Right, so Patrick Chapin is going to see what the bones have to say with a read to bones. He sees a Desecration Demon. And at, a Ghost Council, it looks like. Yeah, probably are those two you want to have in your hand. Why not, right? Keep, keep the pressure on. Well, we, we know that uh, he's holding another precinct captain and a uh, hero's downfall. Yeah, we are bones. He might, he might just want to land. He might have been going for a land here. He might. He's very far ahead as far as the board is concerned. Uh, even though there's a flame, a, a storm breath dragon over on the other side, it's only a four four. And desecration demon is a six six. So that that defense isn't going to happen. And the six six is, you know. Two attacks away from killing Frank Carson alongside those one ones. One top, one bottom. Sure. So one goes on the top, one goes on the bottom. Oh, there's that land. So he does get the land, and he kept the the ops of that, which you know. That's okay. It's kind of a um, you know reach, if you would, right. for that last two damage that um, would need, probably need to be dealt. Desecration demon attacks. I can't imagine there'll be a block here because how important is it just to have a pro white creature that can keep off, you know, at least the other creatures that are happening. Sure. Second precinct captain. Now Frank Carson is a very, very intelligent man. Has he thought of a way to get out of this situation? Now, he does have a second Storm Breath Dragon, but look at this board position. We have two Storm Breath Dragons for Frank Carson, but there's a Desecration Demon, a couple of Precinct Captains, and a couple of One Ones. Frank Carson's at seven. Are the two 4-4 uh, Flyers enough yeah, to, sure. to um, make sure the Desecration Demon doesn't attack? That it, is not the case, because in comes the team, says Patrick Chapin. And I believe, uh, yeah, be I believe he turn. just flashed sure. his Opsidat. Okay. No, it's not no, this it's turn, not. but it's when it blinks back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to play around it, I need to uh, block here, which is also not going to end well. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, I have no odds, actually. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, talked about Frank Carson's much wanted indulgence. <laughs> he he did the math and uh, quickly yeah, moved on to sideboarding. Good. That's right. Pretty so pretty, pretty good showing for a five card hand uh, and none of you know none of the real action. Yeah, definitely. So, um, pa show your show the world you watch the Pro Tour coverage with the Theros Tourist Achievement. Just log on to Magic. Just log on to planeswalkerpoints.com and enter the redemption code I watch Theros to earn your reward. We could do that too, you know. Sweet. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it right now. All right, so uh, we we saw at the end of that game, I, I know we flashed on Patrick Chapin's hand, you know, a little bit, and he had two more read the bones in his hand after that first <laughs> one. So let's take a look at read the bones. And and it's it's very reminiscent um, for me, at least for as uh, you know. Sign in blood, which you know had the the additional ability to target your opponent, you right, know, to right. deal the, the two damage. But the whole you know black using its life as a resource to draw cards and get further in the game, you know, two life, two cards. The, the ability to dig four cards deep too. Well, well, that, yep. I mean, that's that's definitely what makes it a lot better. But if you compare the cost, you have two. Versus three, and now you get to dig four cards. And here we go. Here's, here it is. Read the bones. It's a common. It's good to see commons making uh, it from uh, making it into these constructed decks from um, the new set. Powerful card drawing represents a night whisper. That's another one that's kind of the sure. same thing because yeah. you can't target with that one. And it's most often used in like mid range. Sure, we, we've decks. seen people. We've seen people playing divination in this spot mm -hmm. in the past in control decks. Right, three mana, two cards. This is this is a little better. Yeah, and originally it was scry one, draw a card, then lose a life, but, um, you know. It was, it was actually scry one, draw a card, then lose a life twice. Oh. So it was scry, scry one, draw a card, then lose a life, scry one, draw a card, lose a life. But that felt too uh, that's fiddly, little, which is a game yeah. design term, you know, talking about that, stuff, which that's just very feels a little clunky. too cl clunky. Yeah, it was just, this is just cleaner, and, you know, you, you also are able to appreciate what the card does. And more. I would definitely forget to do one of those. That, that's, <laughs> you that, forgot to read one of them just I, now. I, I know. I, I would have... I, 
I would play that card, and one of those things I wouldn't do. I don't know which one, but yeah, something, when, something would go wrong there. When, when, when Mike and I were, Mike Flores and I were doing our, our podcast for Topic Magic about, about the set, you know, we were talking about Read the Bones, mm-hmm. and, you know, Mike and, and Patrick have some some affinity for for the same decks and i was i was teasing mike you know because he was like I, i'm not gonna play read the bones that's not for me it's not for me i'm like mike what are you talking about this is absolutely the card you're gonna play you know black white mm-hmm. you know draw some cards you know lose a little life get it back and he's like no 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 and i'm like trust me and and i feel while i'm not seeing mike play it i think seeing patrick play it Feels somewhat vindicating for me in this. Well, I'm, I'm, in this I'm, argument, I'm, I'm willing to guess that both these players would play Night Whisper, Night Whisper, <laughs> yes, and yeah, yeah. in some way, shape, or form. So this is just tons times yeah. better yeah. than than a Night Whisper. It's funny every whisper. every every match I've watched a Star City player uh, playing today. I've seen them read the bones. I saw I was watching Billy Jensen. He had he had that card in his uh, in his limited deck. Oh yeah, he, it, it's a limited powerhouse. If, if you need to refill or refuel, would you, would or, you first pick it? In like a second pack? I don't like want first. to, but I'd really love to have it. it feels, you know, it, I, I want to do something really exciting, and that and that's a powerful effect. But it just doesn't get my juices going, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, you want to be you want to be on a mission, right? You want to be yeah. on like you. Like, I took an abhorrent overlord. Yeah, and, and a, we're gonna make this work. I got a wing steed rider, and yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're like, oh, I could draw two cards. It's very good. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't do it for me. But I'd play it. I'd never cut it. Let's have three. Maybe I wouldn't play three. And I think a lot of other people. Th- I think a lot of people thought that it would that devotion decks would be secret or something. But I thought mm. there would be a lot of devotion decks. Yeah. Yeah, I remember saying that I ex- that I expect more devotion decks than like at the Magic Online and uh, Star City Games tournaments uh, uh, would be. But yeah, I think most others just expected the the average uh, decks from say the the known decks. Yeah. Here are two you know great magic thinkers talking about what they were anticipating coming in, and mm-hmm. the idea that people like felt like the devotion decks were a little secret. Like all the teams thought that maybe their devotion deck was a little secret because like we didn't see them mm-hmm. I, I just at, uh, at previous time. events. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know it's. <laughs> here, Patrick, saying this isn't really my kind of deck necessarily. Yeah, I mean, we we all know that, Patrick. We we all agree. Not that it's. I mean, we, it looks like a great deck, yeah. but uh, you just need to add some red and blue cards. Yeah, well, like, exactly. Those are Grixis deck, splash and white. Yeah, and a couple of we'd seven be, or eight cast of spells, maybe a Boulder Fall or something. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that seems like more more what we what we would normally see from Patrick Chapin. But uh, yeah, one of the hardest things to do when you when you're preparing for a pro tour is to figure out what everyone else is going to play. To figure out what everyone else is going to figure out. Yeah. Right. And that. and so I I mean I, I don't think Nick though trying to Nick's was was a tough card to figure out. No, I mean anything that makes a lot of mana is going to be powerful. Cradley Academy. Exactly. The okay. some of the, a lot of the best decks are the decks that can make the most mana. So here we go. We, we actually have game played now, and Frank Carson leads with the mountain. No play, and he passes the turn. So one, one of the things that's interesting about the Star City game, I mean, the Shadow Fireball deck, is they, they don't have uh, one drops. Ah. So it sounds like a Night Vale Spectre from Tom Martell just uh, revealed... A master of waves from oh. his opponent's deck, and oh. he is going to awesome things are going to happen. That's, <laughs> it. that's, that's at least <laughs> that's three just... tokens, <laughs> four tokens. Yeah, at least four tokens actually. Yeah, that is that is uh, that is the way we drew it up in the board and on the in the room. That's a soldier of the pantheon there. Yep, soldier of the pantheon. It has protection for multicolor, and you gain a life when an opponent plays a multicolored spell. Um, like so, a dummy raid, or yeah, or a burning tree emissary. Yeah, so. You know, we're seeing a lot of these devotion uh, decks, and it give it leads into people playing. You know, the triple hybrid cards from from um, you know Ravnica block. How, if when you're building this deck, are you just going on Gatherer and <laughs> just I mean, <laughs> how, how do you look for all of the triple hybrid cards? Because yeah. I wouldn't have thought of Night Vale Spectre. But oh that's, yeah, yeah, I no, mean, yeah. Night Vale, Night vale Spectre is, was was high on that list. So there we see uh, Burning Tree emissary into Dami Raid. And Dami Raid is going to come in, just come in with four. So we're going to yeah. look at the top card, and it's a Frost Burn. Weird. So we are on the way to um, 
pledging yeah. our loyalty to peripherals. Uh, yeah, just giving Patrick Chapin life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got a, that part. He got, he got two lives this turn. He's got another life coming next turn. I don't know how concerned Frank Carson is about that. No. I, th I think he's looking to do big things with, with all of these mana mana symbols. Right, and then we, we see he's got a, the Frostborn Weird. He's got a, a Zenagos, uh, a Storm Breath Dragon, a couple lands. Let's take a look at what Patrick's working with here. Uh, we see another soldier. We see that Desecration Team at... Oh, he has a blood, blood Baron blood of Viscopa. Blood Baron of Viscopa. Talk about cards that have next man up from... Oh. Uh, well, he, he was one of the major men in... And, and block constructed. Yeah, and block we haven't, constructed. But we haven't really seen much of him in standard yet. But yeah, he's he's just... Here he comes. All right, so Frank is looking at... Uh, he has a Perforos in his hand. And if he wants, he can play it. And it would be a 6-5 Indestructible. I believe that's what Perforos' um, stats are. He also could play a Frostburn weird... Uh, he also has a Storm Breath Dragon in his hand. But um, in interesting, you were mentioning that um, the Channel Fireball uh, Mono Red <laughs> Devotion deck doesn't have any one drops in it. It seems as though they're, they were trying to maximize the amount of mana symbols per card. Right. And a one drop is only going to be one devotion all right. the time. So they, there you get a look at uh, the God of the Forge. And it is a 6 5. It becomes an indestructible creature. And so? and there it is. It has hit the battlefield, and Devotion is at actually Devotion no, is only at four. four. Yeah. Devotion is only at four, but this sets up the next turn, play a creature, and activate Devotion. And then start fighting your Perforos. <laughs> Fight. That guy talked about your mom. <laughs> oh, did he? Do you like my Perforos? Got out of Forge Forks? Yeah, I do. I've been working on it. I couldn't wait till I got here. All right, so both of the of the uh, champions are going to attack the Dami Raid, and Dami Raid just goes down. Can't block. He cannot block. Well, he can't be blocked by the Burning Tree Emissary because he is multicolored. I think we're going to get a Desecration Demon here. Yep, Desecration Demon 6-6, six, six, flying. Uh, and if not, you know, you know, next turn, if he hadn't killed that the Planeswalker, you know, Perforos would be... Uh, you know, walk walk the plains of mortals, <laughs> and uh, and be able to fight that desecration demon. Yeah, not with a lot, Raid's ability. Yeah, not a lot of things with stuff. Look how big that hammer is. <laughs> you just kind of squish whatever you hit. He's like, yeah, nice, nice one, Thor. I got, <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> Pull it out of the toolbox. Let's see which one's bigger. Yeah, it doesn't really look that big, but it's it's, it's bigger than Thor's. It's pointier. Also, that's weird. Thor is not taller than mountains. That's true. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Perforos is definitely the man among gods. <laughs> we'll say. Patrick Chapin approves of Perforos. So we get a nice tight shot of this hand, and it has some, it has a lot of options. He's got some decisions to make. Does he want to go aggressive? Does he play the Stormbreath Dragon just to posture in a defensive way? Does he play the Frostborn Burn Weird and you know? Leave mana open. He may even be concerned. Well, he's at 20 life, so he's probably not too concerned about playing his um, stomping grounds untapped in order to facilitate, you know, a five drop. I think that is what we're going to see. Frank Carson goes to 18. That's going to give him five mana. And that is a Storm Breath Dragon. This also makes Perforos a creature. Yep. So now it's a 6-5 Indestructible. And he takes two because the creature entered the battlefield. Yep. Two damage is dealt to Patrick Chapin. And attack for six. And obviously nothing's going to get in the way of a god. You know, and live to tell a tale. So Patrick Chapin just takes it. So he takes a total of eight damage that turn. He's oh, going to go man. down to 14. There we see. In addition to, uh, he picks up another uh, five drop. In addition to his Blood Baron, he, he's picked up a... Uh, Ghost Council. Yep, opposite that. Ghost, Ghost Council. Old Ghost Dad. You got a promotion at work. Yeah. Ghost Dad 2. <laughs> was that actually a movie? Don't tell me. Ghost Don't. Dad. Ghost Dad was a movie. I know Ghost Dad was a movie. I don't believe there was a Ghost Dad 2. Oh, thank you. Yet. Yet. So that's what Bill Cosby's been doing all this time. So Patrick Chapin thinking about this planes. 
into yeah. Obsidat, maybe? Thinking about his five drops. Yeah, he does have a couple of five drops. He has two options. He has Blood Baron of Viscopa and Obsidat Ghost Council. Um, he also has a Hero's Downfall if he wants to save that to turn off Devotion at any point uh, by killing either the Storm Breath Dragon oh, or yeah. the um, Burner Tree Emissary, um, in, in which case he could play his Temple of Abandon, I'm thinking. Oh, Temple of Deceit is what he has in his hand. But he does go with the planes to go up to five mana and play the Blood Baron of Viscopa. 4-4. Four, four. It has lifelink and it has protection from white and black. Those parts probably won't be very relevant, but the lifelink part, completely an issue for any red deck. So now Frank has to see an opening here. He knows that, <laughs> that he's going to have a 6-5 indestructible creature for at least the duration of this turn. He also has the 4-4 four, four flyer. Does he, is this when you get aggressive? No, let's, let's see. He's also got, uh, you know, Boros Reckoner, Frostborn Weird, and uh, the, the Planeswalker still in his hand here. Yeah, he actually has Xenoghost, the, the Reveler, in his hand, which he can play and then activate its zero ability to basically get all of his mana back and play another spell. That's also an option. I believe you have to pick either green or red for your devotion, or does it just count green and red creatures? I think it just counts the creatures in play. Right. So he would be able to get, I guess, three mana. So he'd pay four to get three, and he would still be able to cast um, any other creature in his hand that he wanted to. Stride it. He scries off his land, and now he's thinking. Very um, thoughtful player. Well, both of these guys. Right, a little creature rearranging from Frank Karsten. I've seen players who actually arrange um, their creatures in order from the one they like the most to the one they like the least. And I'll tell you that story later, but it's actually it's actually true. Is it about Rusty? It's not about Rusty. It's, it's about an actually pretty good player. Oh, you hear the judge. It's like, I appreciate that you're a thoughtful magic player, but I need you to be a magic player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Storm Breath Dragon gets into the olive yellowish green zone and it attacks Patrick Chapman for four. Same Down two. goes Boris Reckoner, and it's going to deal two damage, and a Frostburn weird, weird is also going to deal two damage. These are obviously um, peripherals triggers, and uh, Patrick Chapman is going to be at six life. I believe should be. Now the tables are, are kind of turned. There's, I mean, when I guess whenever there's a god that's actually a creature in play, the tables are turning. But we've seen um, Perforos do a lot of damage and limited. Um, we, we just actually just watched uh, Chris Calcano a couple of rounds ago, and um, his uh, match to be 3 and 0 oh, just deal 15, well, 14, 12, 14 damage over the course of the game. Uh, Desecration Demon gets tapped by uh, Burning Tree Emissary, which really wasn't doing a whole lot because right. of the champions so in play. Well, right? yep. So um, it's going to put a counter on Desecration right. Demon, but it will be tapped before attackers can be declared. Oh, that's right. With the, the two soldiers of the Pantheon, Patrick gained a little life that turn off the Frostborn Weird and yeah. that Bar Strikener. Sure. By a little life, I mean four. <laughs> so he just gained back the life oh, he so, lost yeah. from Bar Perforates. Yeah, exactly. That's where the life, that's where yeah, the life yeah, yeah, yeah. changes was. The old net zero. Is this... That, is this why this card's being played? I didn't think that this would be the. Uh, I didn't think that the gain a life part of the of the soldier would be the most relevant in most of these matches. But it seems to be, as a hero's downfall takes out the storm breath dragon, and then a third, <clears throat> a third soldier of the Patheon comes down. So that's going to be three life every time Frank Carson plays. You know, one of the creatures. Like the, one of the creatures that he really wants to play. Yeah. He wants to just get his devotion up. There are too many colors. Need, need a little electricery here. <laughs> <laughs> and all it takes is a little electricery, and, and this game would be very, uh, different. very, very different. 
That's probably. Do you think Frank Carson's thinking that right now? <laughs> he probably have electricity in his sideboard at he, one point. He may have. I would. I would not be surprised if, if every red card was in his sideboard at one point or another. So here goes Xena goes. Gain three life. Gain three life. You're going the wrong way. Um, it's going to make a token. And now he gets to deal damage. He actually gets to deal damage with his Perforos. Yeah. Because, you know. So, he, so it's, uh, you know, he gives Patrick one life over the course of the turn. Yeah. But now, subsequent turns, every every subsequent turn that the Xenagos sticks around, um, that minus zero is going to put another 2-2 two, two, um, <clears throat> Satter into play, which also deals two damage to Patrick Chapin. And, you know, later in the game, we'll probably deal another two damage by attacking him. Well, the token's going to attack the... Tap the demon. Oh, the, so this token, it's going to... The token's just going to put the, the Desecration Demon on lockdown. Right, but Hero's Downfall is probably going to have something to say about this. Well, if it does, it's not going to say it yet. Well, I guess there's still some decision going on, Patrick Chapin. Okay. I thought he might want to play the Desecration Demon, but I mean the um, opposite that Four Ghost Council. Are declared. Hero's Downfall, Boros Reckoner. Yeah, get that out of here. <laughs> So not only does that get rid of a very, very pesky creature, but it turns off Devotion 5, and, and Perforos, God of the Forge, is now just an enchantment. Yep. And uh, Patrick sends almost everyone, and then sending, everyone, yeah. Yeah, he's sending everyone. There is a soldier of the, of the Pathion, a little bit off the so, Soldier the of the exit stage right. <laughs> don't, don't mind me over here. He's like, I'm going to outflank him. <laughs> I'll go around the back, guys. So that's two, four, two six, Pantheon, seven, eight, nine, Kratos. ten. One soldier of the Pantheon and Blood Baron Viscopa attack you. So two soldiers are attacking oh. Xenagos, and one soldier and the Blood Baron uh, are attacking Frank Karsten. Yep. All right, so Frank Carson is at six, untaps to see if he can draw anything that gets him out of this, and he drew a mountain. That's probably not the card he wants to see. Now, with all of his mana, he does have the ability to activate um, his Frostburn Weird and his Perforos, but not facing down this board state. Patrick Chapin is just looking to close this game out. He also has an opposite that Ghost Council in his hand, which... <clears throat> would end this game yeah, in a few yeah. blinks, but it doesn't really matter. The attack, the alpha strike is more than enough, and Patrick Chapin wins this match to the zero. Yeah, and there's uh, and that brings Chapin's record uh, for the tournament up to four and one. Yep, he's... I'm gonna have that we're, gonna, we're gonna hear a little bit from Patrick and, uh, you know, before we move <laughs> yeah. on to our next match. Yeah, because we do have another match that's gonna be coming up next, so there will be more magic, Rashad Miller. Brian David Marshall. Hey. Uh, so we're going to talk about slivers again? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, talk about so you know a card like Blood Baron of Escopa. You know, yeah, you know, you know that's a card. I mean, we, we it obviously had a constructed impact mm -hmm. at Proto Dragon's Maze as uh, in a block constructed format. But right. now, you know, now you know it's you, know, you see those cards in block constructed. And the question is always, you know, can this card? You know, sure, sure, you're you're raking in Triple A, kid. You know, but can you can you hit a major league curveball and? Yeah, we're 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 seeing. Yeah, you know, it looks pretty good so far. Yeah, you know when you when you expect a field full of red decks, it's nice to have a four four life linking creature right. because one. Because remember four, the the first yeah the first deck that we saw at a major standard event was at the Star City Open mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was. It was, you know, a devoted red deck. It didn't have right. the, the Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, but it did have, you know, Fanatic of Magus. Yeah. And was just like, uh, attack you, attack you, attack you, seven. You know, oh, did you stabilize? Blah. Nope. <laughs> and, and a lot of times, all you really need to stabilize is four toughness and a little bit of life. We've seen that over the course of magic in a form of, you know, like Ravenous Bailoff or, you know, the other four fours that come to play gain you yeah. for life. Um, life link has always been a big deal when trying to just take buy more time right. to, you know, whittle down all of the red players' cards so that, you know, that 
you know, they spin on the cards to deal 22 damage, but if you gain four to, six, to four to eight life, you're still not dead yet. Yeah. So let's um, take it down to Tim Willoughby and see what he has to say with uh, Patrick Chapin. Hi, Tim Willoughby here from the feature match area. Now, Patrick Chapin, that was quite a match against Frank Carsten. The first time we've seen the Star City Games team up against the Channel Fireball team this weekend. How do you feel about how it went? Uh, winning's pretty sweet. <laughs> no, I mean, i uh, obviously known Frank a long time. We sat next to each other the round before this, so we both knew what each other were playing. But uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. Got lucky in game one, he double mulliganed. But then we had a really, a really good game two, and it came down to the wire. It was pretty pretty awesome. It must be kind of a funny one when you see the mulligans coming because ultimately you kind of always want to have a good game but in a pro tour at the same time you just want to win right? Yeah I mean you don't you can't really think too much about it like uh, I mean I lost to Nassif when uh, he mulled a four at Worlds one year you know can't read too much into it got to just play hard even when they're up you know or even when they're down. Awesome, and you're, you're playing a Devotion deck. We're seeing quite a few Devotion decks here, oh, no, but... Actually, uh, Frank was playing a Devotion deck. Almost, sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry, a lot of other people are playing... Uh, I, I'm just playing a black-white mid-range deck. Uh, Frank was actually playing a Devotion to red deck, so... And how do you feel about that matchup? Do you think you're going to be seeing a lot of it today? Oh, definitely. Definitely going to see a lot of... There's all kinds of Devotion decks. I've already seen Devotion to green, Devotion to blue, and Devotion to red, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I've got to imagine there's a few, you know, one or two Devotion to black decks, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I uh, played the deck that I did was I thought that it matched up well against Devotion decks. So potentially good matchups all weekend? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of bad matchups, I mean, but uh, hopefully I play against a lot more Devotion decks. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. I think we've got one more game left in the feature match area, but best of luck for the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thanks. And Tim's right. We do have one more game to watch, unless it ends in the draw. We have <laughs> at least one more game to watch in the feature match area, and that's going to be um, Ole Rode. Rade. Not yeah. raid. Not raid. Ra not raid versus Sam Black. And you guys wanted to see the, um, the Mono Blue Devotion deck? That's what Sam Black's playing. So we're going to get to see that. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm excited. You didn't even look at the deck list yet. I'm looking I at it right now. I surprised Brian David Marshall with that deck. So you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and watch these guys play. They're kind of waiting for us to stop babbling and, you know, then reconvene right, babbling right, about the game. Let's get down to the floor. Okay, I want to see this deck. Let's get down to the floor. Let's watch some magic. I want to see this. I want to see the game. All right. There we go. There is um, Sam Black versus Ollie Raddy. Oh, Ollie on the uh, right here with the shorn head. And he is, uh, looks like his uh, elvish uh, mystic got tapped down by a Tidebinder mage on turn two from <laughs> Sam Black. That is Lock just, it down. You know what? Just, just you, like you're we talking drew about it up. bolt the bird. He's like, bind the elf. Bind, bind the elf. You know what? It's. I'm a, I'm a fan of both the bird, unless I'm the one who's getting my bird bolted. Find the elf. It's not as bad, especially with Matt Red Mana over on the other side. But uh, you know, a scavenger lose is a nice follow-up. Yeah. Yes. Sam Black tied as uh, for being ranked 12 amongst um, the rest of the Magic players right. here playing. You know, tied 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 for 25th. Yeah. In, yeah, the, in the top 25th. 25th. In the top 25, he's tied with uh, Ivan Flock coming in. Yeah. Hoping Ooh. to move up in the rankings. Look look at the sweet cards we have in Ole Rade's deck. Is yeah. that, that's a miscut of Hydra. Hey. <laughs> There's a card I got to preview for uh, Magic get Daily uh, MTG .com. And and did you say it was a hit? I, I mean, I, I said, you know, this is, you're going to see this as a sideboard card. It's a sweet card. Yeah, it is. It, it gets around counter magic. It stops um, any um, bounce spells. And it just gives you something to do with all of the mana that you have. If, if you have, if you once you get flooded and you draw a miscut of Hydra, the Blue Jacks is just going to have to take X damage, where X is one less than the total amount of mana you can you can uh, produce that turn. <laughs> there you get a look at Miss Cutter Hydra. Up, oh, he fights, kills Tidebinder Mage, unlocks his uh, unlocks um, his yes, elf. Elvish Mystic. Yeah. And uh, Athasa hits the the battlefield for Sam Black. Yeah. And there's a fourth land. He has a Muta Vault, so he has three islands. Um, so the most devotion he can add to his battlefield will be three. There's four mana and so he's taxed with the muta vault, kills the oh, don't we raid, yeah. plays tied by the mage. Says, please, <laughs> please, for Stop. your own safety, just 
Just stay tied to this chair. <laughs> I don't want to have to shoot you. I'm blue. I can't actually shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like uh, Ali Roddy picked up uh, Pelucranos, World Eater. He's going to play a forest, which will... Well, he's thinking about not playing a forest. He also has a stumping ground. That's also an option. Um, he has a destructive revelry, which uh, although it does destroy and it can destroy an artifact or an enchantment, uh, Thassa is indestructible, so that will not be the target unless we want to use it just to deal two damage. So there's the Pelucranos that we were just mentioning. It is a 5-5 five five with monstrous XX green. Do you remember, do you remember when, like... Juzam Jin was the crown jewel of a display case in a in a magic store. I, I remember when when five five for four was just too good. So <laughs> yeah, all the, the subsequent five five for four dealt the damage to you or did, did something awful. Here comes uh, Biden and Thassa. Yeah, Biden and Thassa gives Sam Black the devotion he needs to attack with his Thassa. There should be some flavor bonus here if, if you have the Biden and the Thassa in play. Other than just drawing a card, you should get a little bit more. But I guess Sam Black would just settle for the extra card. So he draws a card. Ali Roddy goes down to There's, 13. There is a Master of Waves coming. Ah, the Waves? May, maybe. He might be a little, you know, a little worried about just losing everything to the... Uh, oh, to, to the, the Pelucranos? Pelucranos, yeah. Well, I might be a little off from that because it's XX green. I so just got to kill the master of waves. Yeah, I guess just, that's the only <laughs> way you have to kill. <laughs> there are all these waves and no one to master them. So do you think um, Ole is expecting a master of waves right now? Or, oh, he's, or is he's, he just... He's got to know it's coming. Is he just... Uh, wait, does he just want to jam a... A miscutter hydra, and maybe even play defense with it. Just hold back something, except right. He can he can block the the Thassa well. Yeah, yeah he can block. The, yeah, yeah. Thassa has that ability. Yeah, make it unblockable. And and yeah, and Sam will un be untapping as part of his turn. Wow, so. that's, that's that's so broken that they let you do that. <laughs> yeah, you can untap with Thassa in play. That's silly. So it looks like you're gonna uh, look at Thassa, God of the Sea, indestructible, five five for three mana. That's fair. And five pips of mana. <laughs> Beginning of your upkeep, scry one. You just do that every turn. It's so good. I wish I could scry one every turn. I guess I should, you know, pray to Vasa. Yeah. Look, pray you find your Galrider slivers. <laughs> <laughs> so Ali, not in a great spot, even though Pelucranos is threatening to, you know, kill something. If he really wants to eat, right. yeah, he needs. He if needs. He's feeling hungry. He needs. He needed that land to come into play on tap so he could kill the Tidebinder Mage. So he attacks with the Pelucranos. That's going to bring Sam Black down to 13 as well, and that is a destructive Revelry, which right. is going to get rid of the Bite It. It's going to also deal two more damage to Sam Black. So you bring him to 11. It's not really a race just yet. Because um, the Thassa is probably going to be turned. And we into see a 1-1 one, one Miscutter Hydra. Oh, the, the, the shields up Miscutter <laughs> Hydra. It's like, oh, you're, you're just blue, right? Like, I'll, I'll take a hit from a Mutavault. Yeah, the Mutavault can still attack, and Thassa still has the ability to make a creature unblockable. But attacking for two is, doesn't seem nearly as good as um, it used to, you know, now that the Pelucranos is just waiting to become bigger than this 5-5 five five and just take over this game. There's another Biden. Extra Biden. Yeah. It's a quadrant. All right, so the Biden comes down. That's going to bring the, the the devotion back just, up to five. Did you, hear, did you just hear the, the disdainful glee in Sam's voice? He's like, oh, draw, a card. draw a card. Hey, drawing a card. That's There's probably the best thing you could do in a magic game. Judge is familiar. Yep, Judge is familiar comes down. That's going to put give him an extra little pip of devotion and gives, gives him a flying uh, Orphidian, basically. As Ollie looks at a second miscut of Hydra, along with a... Did you say a miscut Hydra? No, I'm <laughs> I'm, yeah, it could be a miscut Hydra. I'm waiting to see the, the first miscut. Miscut Hydra, yeah. Miscutter Hydra, yeah. 
but it uh, looks like it's that oh, I just got a crimped one. Like, I was looking at the card, and I was like, what that is, card that ends is... with shock? Shocking, <laughs> like... Stone shock yeah. giant? <laughs> it's like, no, that's all right. No, it's just shock. He has shock in his hand. Um, it has um, a couple of targets. He could use it to get rid of the judge's familiar. He could use it to take out the... the um, the 2-2 two -two that's the locking The Tidebinder Mage unlocked Yeah, the Tidebinder Mage, which also changes uh, Thassa to not a creature anymore. It can, it's also an instant speed way to get rid of the Muse Vault, which I don't know that it's really threatening right now. Yeah, no, I don't think he's that worried about that. So this might be a good opportunity for Ali to just pass the turn with a bunch of mana open. He's got to be considering that, but he also has the option of playing a 4-4 Miscutter Hydra. Did you, did you know there were scry tokens in, in booster packs these days? <laughs> As Sam puts a puts a token card on top of his library so he remembers to scry, doesn't want to forget. Well, I thought they just trigger. had some clever new sleeves that, yeah, that, yeah. that I had never seen before. Only Rade, Pro Tour Hall of Famer. Five In, copies. Invitational winner. Invitational winner. Name is card. Uh, Sylvan... Safekeeper. Yep, Sylvan Safekeeper. He had a lot of hair when that card was made. And uh, a shock takes out the Tidebinder Mage. He decides that um, that extra mana is pretty important, as well as change the Thassa back to, you know, a spiritual enchantment. <laughs> but not a spirit. Yep, so still Blue can still... Uh Fight the judge's familiar if need be. Yep, it can monstrosity for one. x equal two or x equals one. Yeah, which will put one counter on it. Um, but instead, um, there's going to be a miscutter hydra with three counters on it. So there's a three three miscutter hydra, a one one miscutter hydra, and a palucranos. And, and now we, we we're going in. We're getting aggressive, says Alirade. All right, Sam's at eleven. Yeah, and that's nine damage and. Four of it can't be blocked by all those blue <laughs> creatures. The only one that can be blocked is a 5-5, five five, and I don't know if Sam Black is willing to, to chump block with um, the judges familiar. Next turn he gets an extra attacker. Next turn he does get an extra attacker. He is going to have to chump. He's going to take four. He's going to go to seven. Yep, he's going to go to seven. Thassa's is well away yeah. from becoming a creature, unless this next card is on double blue as far as devotion is concerned. Sam keeps the card on top, so it must be a good one. It could be something that turns Thassa back on. It could just be a very good card to get him out of the situation. We haven't seen it yet. But, <laughs> but, 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 I mean, he's still going to deal. You know, he gets to untap. He also has, you know, if he draws a land. He, he can uh, Pelucranus for three. Is that a rapid hybridization? Oh, my. Well, there's four blue. Uh, we're, I think we're going to see. Yes. We're going to master some waves. master of waves. And I'd have to think that if master of waves is the play here, yeah, that last. You, better, you need to hybridize uh, that Pelucranus, uh, Pelucranus right, right now. Right now. I guess you can just do it in response to him activating it. You though. actually can do it in response yeah. to activating yeah. it. That does work, and you effectively yeah, that's get a actually, time Yeah, that's actually much better. Right. Sink all your mana, try to kill my guy. So Ollie just drew a land, and that will let him activate Pelucranos for one additional X right. value. So is it more valuable for um, Ollie to keep that card in his hand to... You know, pretend like he has something, or does he want to just go all in? Well, he doesn't need to do three, right? He just he just needs to do it for one. One is all it takes to take out the Master of Waves and all of the Elemental Tokens, as those Elemental Tokens will revert to their 1-0 status. So he does it for two. In response, there's, there's the hybridization. Oops. Wow. So here is your frog lizard. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have, have a frog lizard that looks remarkably like John Finkel. I, I wonder if this was also approved that's a special, by, by That's Mr. a special on-camera token. <laughs> and, then, and there you see it. The um, that's, that's a good-looking frog lizard. Yeah. To be honest, you know. Quite, quite I, the catch, yeah, I, honestly. I've, I've seen worse frog lizards. <laughs> Completely honest. So this is this is an interesting uh, like Ollie's so close, right? He can just like get 
he can just get Sam in two attacks. But he doesn't really have two attacks. He doesn't have that kind of time. Right. I think he really needs to not die to the subsequent attack. And he can just get in four, but then, yeah. Yeah, if he gets those, in those, those are two one elemental tokens. Yeah, and a lot of those creatures won't be able to be blocked because Thassa still has an ability. Any double blue, actually any single blue devotion creature from Sam Black turns on Thassa two more mana, or is it two or three more mana? I'm not sure exactly how much it takes to give a creature unblockable, yeah. but that's five um, damage that just can't be stopped. All right. Two more Sam, mana, and that's... Sam goes down to four. Scry, do you like it? He likes it, or is he still thinking? Thinking. He's thinking. Thinking, yeah. It's a good game. <laughs> this actually is a good game. It's been going back and forth. Yeah. I mean, that, that rapid hybridization, polychronous play is, is really is something to just keep in mind when you're playing against Monstrous and Limited, that if you, you know, right. Voyages End or Griptide in response to the Monstrous, they, they don't get to do anything. Cool. Right. If, if the creature actually does not become... Monstrous. monstrous, yeah, it needs to be there. It needs to be yes. there on the resolution of the ability. It has, has to be there in order to gain the status yeah. of being monstrous. Then instead of being monstrous, it just becomes monstrous under the bed and makes you cry. <laughs> so I believe we're still thinking about the scry. Sam starts pantomiming, like how his attack step might go, what could happen. We've got three blockers. Yeah, so, so Sam's working with Abidant of, of Thassa, actual Thassa, God of the Seas, a Master of Waves, and four elemental tokens from said Master of Waves. He also has a Mutal Vault along with five islands. And, oh. a, and a not insignificant card on top of his deck. Exactly, a card that he is considering heavily whether or not to keep. While Alirade is looking at a, a Elvish Mystic, a 3-3 three, three Fark Lizard token, and a couple of Mist Cutter Hydras. One's a 3-3, three, three, one's a 1-1. One, one. He also has five land, you know, of, vari of varying tappage of green and so or he, red. So he does decide to keep it. So he keeps it. It costs three. It is a Night Veil Spectre. It is a Night Veil Spectre. That turns Thassa back on. He gives him a flying blocker. It's, unfortunately, it's still blue, so it can't get it in the way of those mist cutter hydras, but it allows him to effectively lose one of his creatures and still have a Thassa. So maybe the play is to leave Thassa back on defense, or does he really want to get in? Well, he can't. There's, there is no defense, right? He, he's... Oh, yeah, he's down at he, four. He has he's, to win. He's dead to the crack back here. Uh, unless, well, he gets to keep his Muta Vault. He does right? have his Muta Vault. Yeah, so yeah, Muta yeah. Vault can get in the way of one of those Hydras. He can either chump lock the 3-3, three, three, or he can jump in front of the 1-1 one, one and actually eat it. So in come the Elemental Tokens. Uh, looks like... Two of those at least are going to be eaten. One more could trade with the miss with the with the Elvish, which is what happens. So only one gets through. Alirati goes to nine. Alirati loses Mystic, and uh, Sam Black loses three of his tokens. He still has one, and he has a bunch of creatures left back on defense. He has three. Actually, he has four if you include the Muta Vault. Only the Muta Vault can block those Miscutter Hydras. That's right. One of them is a three-three. One of them is a one-one. Uh, very relevant. The decision will need to be made whether or not uh, the Muta Vault wants to stick around. So now Ali Radi's only attacking with the 3-3 three, three Miscutter Hydra. Yep. And Sam Black's going to take this opportunity to not take three damage. But then he's thinking now he's like, wait, wait maybe I just want to take the three damage. Yeah, it, maybe I want to go to one. I'm holding a Dissolve. He's holding a Dissolve. He's holding one more card. He also has an island. Not sure what that last card was. Um, we'll probably we'll get his hand up on the screen so we can figure out what that is. Oh, it is a dissolve. It's a dissolve and an island. So Ali Rani ships the turn. Sam doesn't block. He goes to one. He keeps the card on top. So can he just make? He can make he can enough make, guys unblockable here. Yep. He made two guys unblockable, and he attacks with the third one, which also can't be blocked, and that's it. Wow. Sam Black wins a nail-biter against was, Hall of Famer Ale Rade. That, that was just uh, white-knuckled. It was pretty white-knuckled, although I can't, I can't exactly relate to that, that, that term because, you know, <laughs> and no, no matter how, it's just lighter 
brown knuckle. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, Rashad Miller, Brian David Marshall. Uh, are we actually going to hear from? I think we're. I think we're yeah. going to talk to Sam Blacker and hear I, I, a little bit about the process of, of arriving at the Mono Blue Devotion deck. I want to hear the process yeah. of deciding how you actually wanted to play the end of that match because there's yeah. a lot of ways you could do the, the things that are there. I mean, you had the Mutavolt. Just that you, decision to go to one. Yeah. How do you know that this deck doesn't have one point of direct Well, damage? again, you he just, had a Dissolve, so he, he was safe there. He did have the Dissolve, and activating the Mutavolt would admit Correct. that he we, couldn't play correct. the Dissolve. Man, he's pretty good at magic. He, he is he's, pretty and, good. and he's only tied for 25th? Only tied. Oh, man. He, this, he's, look, he's looking to improve on it. What was his record coming into this, uh, into uh, this coming round? Coming into this round, Sam Black was undefeated. So he is still undefeated. He he's is 5-0. He's still undefeated, along with Luis Scott Vargas, which I, who I believe won his feature he, match. He did win round. his feature match. Luis is also 5-0. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. You know, Channel Fireball, Star City could see, Games. You could see another Ch Star City Channel Fireball matchup yeah, rematch this, this, next this, round. This rivalry, it's, you know, they're creeping up with each other, maybe forming like a little TP. I don't yeah. know. Just, I don't know. No TPs. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to be hearing from Sam Black. We definitely want to hear, first of all, this seems like a very Sam Black deck first. <laughs> I, 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 think he had a lot, I think he had a lot to do with this deck being the Star City Games deck. But um, we're going to hear it from him. And I also want to know how you make I think why did he – we, we know why he took one damage. Yeah. Uh, took the damage. But let's find out what um, – Sam Black has to say, take it away, Tim with Willoughby. Well, we're back down in the feature match area, and that was an intense match, Sam Black. Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. Uh, game two, I just, like, my first four draw steps were islands, and he killed my first two guys, and I had nothing going on. And he started playing, like, big Ember Swallowers and stuff, and then, I, like, thought about conceding when I got to the point where I could overload a Cyclonic Rift to bounce his board. Decided not to, uh, like, picked up, like, he played a, like, huge hasty Hydra before combat, attacked with everything. I Cyclonic Rifted his board, uh, and then I just have, like, two, like, a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2, two, two, and he's, like, 16 or something, and I just play a Bident, attack, draw, and, like, I have these rapid hybridizations that I'm able to use to, like, buy time against his, like, huge Hydra that comes back down, and almost squeak it out, but he takes game two, and then game three he was on camera, and that was similarly very, very close, absolutely down to the wire match. Those Hydras really, really tough against your deck, right? I mean, you've got Mutavolts and then Rapid Hybridization, right? Yep. Re Mutavolt, Rapid Hybridization, and Overload Cyclonic Rift are my only ways to interact with it. But as it turns out, that was exactly enough. Exactly. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Team Star City Games with a bit of blue devotion. Not that surprised having seen you with a bit of devotion to blue, having seen the way that you like to play with M14 Limited. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Sam. Best of luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much. Heading back to the booth now. Thank you. Well, rapid hybridization. Multitasker. Yeah. It's definitely a multitasker. So let me, let me ask you a quick question. All right. I'm, I got an answer for you. What, what happens if uh, Ole monstrous is for one? And then in response to rapid hybridization, monsters, monsters for, for one, one again. again. Um, Is he then, win that game? Maybe. It, it's, it's a very different game. I don't know. I mean... Kills the Master of Waves, right? Yeah, it does kill the Master of Waves. But, you know, the tokens didn't really do a lot <laughs> that game. Sure. They did, the, the tokens dealt sure. two damage. All right. Something so, to think about. Yeah, that is actually something to think about. A way to, you know... Options you have. All right. I hear that the news desk is ready to tell you what else happened during round five of this tournament. So we're going to send it back to Richard Hagen so you can find out what's going on. Thanks very much, Rashad. Thanks very much, Brian David Marshall. What a game that was. Sam Black, well done. 5-0. and Lots of other people are 5-0 and and 4-1 and 3-2 and 2-3. And 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 you know all that. But what you want to know is, what am I going to play next week in Standard? Well, maybe you're going to play the deck played by this guy who's just coming right up. It's Christian Calcano. It's Esper Control. Over to the video wall. It's time for another deck tech.